Welcome to Audiobook 365 Stories. For a smart man, not knowing foreign languages is a big problem. Voratov realized this strongly when, after finishing his degree, he started doing research work. It's terrible, he said, breathing hard. Although he was only 26, he was fat, heavy, and had trouble breathing. It's terrible. Without knowing other languages, I'm like a bird without wings. I might as well stop working. So, he decided to work hard to learn French and German, even though he was naturally lazy. He started looking for a teacher. One winter afternoon, as Voratov was sitting in his study working, the servant told him that a young lady was asking for him. Ask her to come in said Voratov, and a young lady dressed in the latest fashion walked in. She said her name was Alice Asapovna Anket and that she was a French teacher. She told Voratov that one of his friends had sent her. I'm happy to meet you. Please sit down, said Voratov, breathing hard and putting his hand over the collar of his nightshirt to breathe more easily. He always wore a nightshirt at work instead of a stiff shirt with a collar. Was it Pyotr Sergich who sent you? Yes, yes. I asked him about it. I'm happy. As he talked to Miss Anquette, he looked at her shyly and with curiosity. She was a real Frenchwoman, very stylish and still quite young. Judging by her pale, tired face, her short curly hair, and her very thin waist, she might have been eighteen. But looking at her broad, strong shoulders, the elegant lines of her back, and her serious eyes, Voratov thought that she was not less than twenty-three and might be twenty-five. But then again he began to think she was not more than eighteen. Her face looked as cold and businesslike as the face of a person who has come to talk about money. She did not smile or frown even once, and only once a look of confusion crossed her face when she learned that she was not needed to teach children, but a fat grown-up man. So, Alice Asipovna, said Voratov, will have a lesson every evening from seven to eight. About your fee, a ruble a lesson, I have no problem with that. A ruble is fine and he asked her if she would like some tea or coffee, whether it was a nice day, and with a friendly smile, stroking the green cloth of the table, he asked in a friendly voice who she was, where she had studied, and what she lived on. With a serious face, Alice Asipovna replied that she finished school at a private place and had a certificate as a teacher. Her father recently passed away from scarlet fever, and her mother, who is alive, makes artificial flowers. Ndli. Anket taught at a private school until lunchtime, then spent her afternoons giving lessons to different families. She left, leaving a faint smell of perfume behind. Voratov couldn't concentrate on work for a long time. Instead, he sat at the table, running his hand over its green cloth, lost in thought. It's nice to see a young woman working to support herself, he thought. But it's sad to think that even someone as elegant and pretty as Alice Asipovna has to struggle because of poverty. It's really unfortunate. Never having met respectable French women before, he also considered that this well-dressed young lady, with her strong shoulders and very thin waist, might have another job besides teaching French. The next evening, just before seven o'clock, Ndli, Anquette arrived, cheeks pink from the cold. She opened a book called Margot that she had brought with her and began without preamble. French grammar has 26 letters. The first letter is called A, the second B. Excuse me, Voratov interrupted. Smiling, I must tell you, mademoiselle, that your teaching method might need to change a bit for me. You see, I know Russian, 
Greek, and Latin well? I've studied comparative philology. Perhaps we could skip Margot and start reading an actual author. He explained to the French woman how adults learn languages. I have a friend, he said, who wanted to learn modern languages. He took the French, German, and Latin versions of the Gospels and read them together, carefully analyzing each word. And would you believe it? He achieved his goal in less than a year. Let's do something similar. Let's pick an author and read. The French woman looked puzzled. Clearly, his suggestion seemed very strange and funny to her. If a child had made such a suggestion, she would probably have scolded them. But since Voratov was a grown man and quite stout, she only shrugged slightly and said, Whatever you prefer. Voratov searched his bookshelf and found a well-worn French book. Will this work? It's fine, she said. Great, let's start then. Let's begin with the title. Memoirs. Reminiscences. Dli. Enquête translated. With a friendly smile, breathing heavily, he spent 15 minutes on the word memoirs and just as long on the word day, which tired the young lady. She answered his questions slowly, became confused, and clearly didn't understand her student well, nor did she try to. Voratov asked her questions while he looked at her blonde hair and thought, Her hair isn't naturally curly. She curls it. That's strange. She works all day, yet still finds time to curl her hair. Exactly at eight o'clock, she stood up and, saying goodbye, sir, coldly and dryly, walked out of the study, leaving behind the same gentle, delicate fragrance. Again, Voratov sat at the table for a long time, lost in thought. In the days that followed, he realized that his teacher was a charming, conscientious, and precise young lady, but poorly educated and unable to teach adults. He decided not to waste more time with her and to find another teacher. When she came for the seventh lesson, he took out an envelope with seven rubles inside, held it in his hand, and nervously began. Excuse me, Alisasapovna, but I have to tell you, I'm in a difficult situation. Seeing the envelope, the French girl understood what he meant. For the first time during their lessons, her face softened, and her cold, business-like demeanor disappeared. She blushed slightly, dropped her eyes, and nervously played with her delicate gold chain. Seeing her discomfort, Voratov realized how much that ruble meant to her and how hard it would be for her to lose what she earned. I need to tell you, he muttered, growing more flustered. I, I need to step out for ten minutes. Trying to make it seem like he wasn't trying to dismiss her, but just asking permission to briefly leave, he went into the next room and sat there for ten minutes. When he returned, he was even more embarrassed. He worried that she might have misunderstood his brief absence, and he felt awkward. The lessons resumed, but Voratov felt no interest. Knowing he wouldn't gain anything from the lessons, he let the French girl do as she pleased, not asking questions or interrupting. She translated ten pages per lesson as she saw fit, while he sat breathing heavily, staring at her curly hair, soft white hands, or her neck, and smelling her perfume. He caught himself having inappropriate thoughts, felt ashamed, or was moved to pity her. Sometimes he felt upset and hurt by her cold, professional manner, treating him like a student without smiling, seeming afraid he might accidentally touch her. He wondered how to gain her trust, get to know her better, and help her understand how poorly she taught. One day, Mdli, Anket arrived for the lesson wearing a stylish pink dress that showed a bit of her chest, 
surrounded by a cloud of fragrance that made her seem light and ethereal, as if she could float away with a breeze or vanish like smoke. She apologized, saying she could only stay for half an hour because she was going directly from the lesson to a dance. He looked at her neck and the back of her bare neck, and thought he understood why French women were thought to be frivolous and easily seduced. He was swept away by this cloud of fragrance, beauty, and exposed skin. Meanwhile, she, unaware of his thoughts and probably not interested in them at all, quickly flipped through the pages and translated rapidly. He was walking down the street and met a gentleman friend, saying, Where are you going? Your pale face worries me. They had finished reading memoirs long ago, and now Alice was translating another book. One day, she arrived an hour early for the lesson, apologizing and saying she needed to leave by seven to go to the little theater. Seeing her off after the lesson, Voratov got dressed and went to the theater himself. He went telling himself he was going just for a change and some fun, not because he was thinking about Alice at all. He couldn't admit that a serious man, preparing for an academic career, sluggish in his habits, could abandon his work and go to the theater just to see a girl he barely knew, who was not very smart or intellectual. Yet, for some reason, his heart raced during the breaks. Without realizing what he was doing, he rushed through the corridors and lobby like an impatient boy, looking for someone. He felt disappointed when the break ended. Then, when he saw the familiar pink dress and the beautiful shoulders under the tulle, his heart fluttered as if he had a glimpse of happiness. He smiled happily and, for the first time in his life, felt a twinge of jealousy. Alice was walking with two unattractive students and an officer. She laughed, spoke loudly, and flirted openly. Voratov had never seen her like this before. She seemed happy, warm, and sincere. Why? Perhaps because these men were her friends and part of her social circle. Voratov felt a vast distance between himself and that circle. He nodded to his teacher, but she gave him a cold nod and hurried past. She clearly didn't want her friends to know she had students and needed to earn money by giving lessons. After meeting Alice at the theater, Voratov realized he was in love. During subsequent lessons, he gazed at his elegant teacher, letting his mind wander without restraint both with pure thoughts and impure fantasies. Ndli. Anquette's face remained cold. Exactly at eight o'clock every evening, she said coldly, Goodbye, sir. He felt she didn't care about him and never would, and that his situation was hopeless. Sometimes in the middle of a lesson, he began daydreaming, hoping, making plans. He even composed declarations of love in his mind, recalling that French women were easily won over. But whenever he glanced at his teacher's face, his thoughts vanished like a candle blown out on a windy veranda. Once, overcome by emotion as if in a daze, he couldn't hold back and blocked her way as she left the study after the lesson. Gasping and stammering, he began to confess his love. I care for you. I, I love you. Please let me speak. Alice turned pale, probably shocked, thinking that after this confession, she couldn't return and earn a ruble per lesson. Her eyes wide with fear, she whispered loudly, Oh, you mustn't. Please don't speak. You mustn't. Voratov couldn't sleep that night. He was tormented by shame. He blamed himself and thought deeply. He felt he had insulted her with his confession and that she wouldn't come back. The next morning, he planned to find her address at the address bureau and write her an apology letter. 
But Alice arrived without waiting for a letter. At first, she seemed uncomfortable. Then she opened a book and started translating briskly and quickly as usual. Oh, young man, don't pick those flowers in my garden that I want to give to my sick daughter. She continues to come to this day. For books have been translated already, but Voratov knows only the French word memoirs. When asked about his literary research, he waves his hand, changes the subject to the weather, and says nothing.